Checkout Tracking by the NPD Group brings you a receipt collecting system that gathers data anonymously through technology we created, providing your businesses with answers. Hello everyone, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, my name is Rod Humble, I'm from Toy Talk. A Toy Talk is a company that combines uh, art and science to enable conversation with characters. And I'm here today to talk about the future of computer conversation. I was just killing time till you got here, please go ahead and... Um, so, I'd like to uh, frame my talk around uh, these words of uh, Ludwig Wittgenstein which is, uh, the limits of my language mean the limits of my world. And in our case, the limits of our language define the limits of our art form. So let's look at some of the problems that we've got within interactive arts right now and how those limits express themselves. So the, I'm going to look at two great games, and they are undeniably great games, so I'm certainly not uh, trying to bash them. Uh, but they just illustrate some of the problems that we have with language. So the first one is Call of Duty. Um, some of you may be familiar with this. It kind of became a little meme thing. And it is a, a soldier has lost uh, one of his uh, dear colleagues. And he's at the funeral. And there is this emotionally charged moment where uh, the, he's going to pay respects. And so as an audience member or a user, you might expect that you're going to be able to say a eulogy or to somehow express your grief and instead you hold X to pay respects. And it's pretty funny but it, 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 it uh, demonstrates a narrowness of emotional range that is limited to physically pressing a button to express your grief. Not what we would expect. So going to the other end, another great game and this is The Lurking Horror. This is uh, one of the greatest text adventures of all time. And this is just the opening, uh, the opening scene. You're in a terminal room. has this lovely description, all pizza boxes. And uh, nearby is one of those ugly plastic molded chairs. And sitting at a terminal is a hacker whom you recognize. Again, what we expect to do here is wide open and we just get a little terminal. So I've typed in here, say hello to hacker pretty natural thing to say, perhaps at the beginning of our story, and the game falls flat in its face. It doesn't know what to do, and it just takes you out of it and uh, re removes the immersion. It says, you use the word hello in a way that I don't understand, and out you go. So those are two extreme examples, one too limited a range, the other one too wide a range, and it doesn't catch it. Um, this is a quote from Alan Moore, for those of you not familiar, he's for my money, the uh, greatest comic book writer um, ever. Uh, but at least he's up there. I think most people would agree. And he says, language comes first. It's not that language grows out of consciousness. If you haven't got language, you can't be conscious. So there's been a lot of breakthroughs within artificial intelligence and speech recognition over the past few years. And they are now in the good enough category of they're good enough for purpose and our purpose is art and education. So here are some highlights. Uh, this is Eugene on the bottom right. And Eugene passed the Turing test. It's disputed in the same way that Deep Blue was disputed when it beat uh, uh, Kasparov at, at chess. But it's, it's within range. And in fact, the um, uh, Eugene, uh, for those of you who went away with the Turing test, it was Alan Turing who said, hey, you know what? When a computer can fool people about 30% of the time, that's probably good enough for artificial intelligence and we're on the right track. Uh, Eugene hit 33% a few years ago. Um, some of the disputes, uh, amusingly, are some of the critics say, well, it's not fair because Eugene used humor to uh, persuade humans uh, that uh, he, was a, he was a human, uh, which is pretty funny because, like, what's wrong with that? But uh, that's one of the disputes. But it's certainly good enough for purpose. When you get chatbots that can fool a certain portion of, the, of, of humans that they are human, 
then that's good enough for purpose when it comes to art and education. Uh, on the upper left, uh, a robot that's pa passed a self-awareness test. And these are three robots, and they one of them's been muted, and they listen to their own voices to figure out, yes, I am aware. I think, therefore, I am. Uh, it's rudimentary. It's certainly not some holodeck thing, but it's good enough for purpose. Um, so that was another breakthrough. And of course, Google's uh, artificial intelligence breakthroughs, uh, particularly around self-driving cars, that one should be something of concern to all of us because they're on the roads now. They're out there. Um, but again, good enough, and that's a pretty big breakthrough. Um, when you look at uh, voice recognition, that's sort of everywhere now. We're, we're beginning to take it for granted. That was not the case when, for example, the lurking horror was around. There was a great debate back in the day of, wow, if only we actually could have really good passes or really good voice recognition, we could really make this interactive fiction lock uh, great. Well, the time is here. Um, nobody bats an eyelid if uh, you find your eight-year-old daughter um, listening to jokes and telling jokes to Siri, for example, like my daughter does. Um, so the time, the time is here and all of these technologies have come together. And I'd like to draw a parallel to Toy Talk as a company. Actually, I am um, uh, myself and Tom, I believe, are the only people in the company who have ever worked in computer games. Everybody else comes from uh, Pixar in particular. Um, and other fields of art and entertainment. And you can draw a, a comparison to when Pixar was formed and when they were looking at doing computer animation movies, technology had just got good enough. And there was this perspective that, hey, maybe we can put together these tools to make fully featured animation uh, movies that uh, can say things different than have been said before or show things differently. Um, and I think we're at the same state with a computer conversation. Uh, some people are a bit worried by it. Um, these are generally not stupid people. Um, Stephen Hawking, Bill Gates, Elon Musk are a little bit concerned about AIs running the world, but um, as artists and educators, that's not our problem saving the world. We'll let the world get taken over we, as long as we can make a nice work of art and educate people. Uh, also, for those of us in the audience who like to make uh, money, there was a lot of money uh, going into this area. Um, significantly more, for example, than virtual reality, which I think is the other big foot that is landing in interactive art and education. Uh, so. Microsoft uh, and Amazon, for example, have got incredibly robust uh, speech recognition backends that they're actually uh, allowing third parties to use. Uh, Google and Apple, I think probably most people are familiar with it. So it's a big, big area. Um, this is J.R. Tolkien, who uh, openly admitted that he made a world entirely about his own personal aesthetic of language, um, which is kind of cute. And of course, education, you know, we all know that the there's a great classic tradition of learning by conversation and taking two desperate points of view and being able to argue with a teacher or um, to be able to express a contrary point of view and test that argument um, is a proven method and arguably one of the most effective methods there is. Um, the act of talking to someone actually changes the context. This is uh, Shakespeare with that uh, wonderful scene. I was talking to uh, Yorick, who was this incredibly witty fool, and it's this wonderful scene about uh, deconstructing language, and perhaps language and our words are the only things that uh, live on after our deaths. Uh, perhaps more lightly, this is one of my favorite scenes from Faulty Towers, where Basil Faulty talks to the car, and he's like, I've warned you! We've had this discussion, and now I'm going to give you a damn good thrashing. And he does, and it changes the context. You know, if, if you see me talking to a light bulb in the corner, there's, there's something going on there that is a different emotional context besides me being insane uh, that, uh, that changes. And, so, and the same does go for any application or education application. So this is John Paul Sartre possibly a mediocre human being, but a pretty decent philosopher. And he says that um, as you explore language, it reveals it not only to the person you're talking to, but to yourself. Um, to articulate something um, reveals something about the argument you're making and assists it. So here's some data. Um, Toy Talk, we've released um, several applications uh, before my time, uh, and some of them have been licensed. Um, all of them have been for younger audiences. 
Uh, some learnings that are definitely going to be of use to you if you're going to go into this space. So uh, the first thing is uh, kids love to sing. Uh, they love to sing Frozen songs in particular, a lot. So if you ever have any application, say, come on, give me a song. That's, it's gravy. Enjoy that. Um, the second thing is we all know in this room, if you make a mistake in an application or you frustrate a user, an adult, um, they will perhaps give you a bad review. They may uh, seek a refund. They may go online and say bad things about you. That's nothing compared to listening to a child cry when your app doesn't work correctly. So you can make kids cry when you frustrate them. So uh, addressing that level of frustration is really important. And the art of computer conversation in many ways is the art of the fallback because your recognition is never going to be perfect. And so what you do as you design, we have an internal tool called pull string, is we're designing fallback after fallback after fallback of like, what if this goes wrong? How do we naturally get it to flow into the next area of conversation? That's an area where I would urge anybody going to this space to spend an awful, awful lot of time. Uh, also having uh, the correct synonyms, um, there's lots of heartbreaking examples we had of small children and the character says, should I, should I go to the tree? Tell me if I should go to the tree and I will go there. And that's it. That's, that's an end point. And then the child is uh, saying, go to the twee. And you're like, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Should I go to the tree? Go to the twee, the twee. Um, so having fallbacks and making sure you can recognize how um, the audience and different uh, children actually pronounce words is really important. Um, some pure data. Uh, which uh, may be of interest. Um, the, uh, the average session length for uh, children is uh, about 30 minutes. Mic button press is 15. The longest session we've had is uh, several hours, which is a big deal for a uh, young child. Um, let me zip through that because you probably don't care that. Uh, uh, we feel free because we lack the very language to articulate our unfreedom. That's uh, Zizek, another uh, lovely philosopher of mine. I'd like to talk to you about the uh, range of emotions, the thematic range that our current applications and uh, uh, our current applications have. So, here's bestsellers from Amazon. Um, as you can see, there's romance, self-help books, Harper Lee, kids game, kids. Um, kids books, a little thriller down there. I just pulled these off. Uh, his TV, again, we've got a, got a Western, uh, some nice real life dramas, some reality TV, like a good, a good solid range there. Um, his top grossing iPad apps, um, it's, a, it's a pretty narrow range. I mean, I think you can very easily look and group those up like, oh yeah, that's that kind of game, that's that kind of game. There's maybe four or five uh, in the top if we're being kind. Um, and we can expand that thematic range by expanding our language, our interactive language. So how much of this is reality? How much of this is dreams? This is Father Ted, an Irish comedy, for those of you who are not aware. It's very funny. You should watch that on YouTube. Uh, not that that would be legal. Sorry, you legally stream it somewhere. Uh, here we go. Uh, so this is uh, David Braben, and he's, uh, he created Elite. And when it comes to games, he said, once you move away from shooting games and you're face to face with, character with characters, you're not necessarily blowing their brains out. The speech part comes much more important, which I think is true. So here's a question when you're making entertainment applications, for example. How many times do you hear the words, I love you? In films or books or poems, it's very, very common. How many times have you said that in a game? Or how many times have you seen it in a game where it actually has any kind of emotional impact? So when we look at the kinds of new interactive experience that are possible by all of these technologies that are now there and fit for purpose and ready to use, they involve you, a character, conversation, and artificial intelligence. And all of those are equally important, um, and they allow some different categories. And so I've spent a fair amount of time looking at different categories here. So for example, you may have the player talking to the AI. That's the standard chatbot model. Um, and one side is trying to provide the answers. Um, that's useful for education and it's useful for entertainment. That might be the first place you go to. You could also try and reverse that. So what if the 
uh, student, for example, um, is actually trying to teach something to the AI. Um, as though, as many of you who have uh, done, been educators before, the, the learning happens twice. The teacher learns and the student learns. It's actually incredibly powerful when a student has to teach somebody um, a subject because they learn at the same time. Uh, the other way is uh, in entertainment when the player talks to the AI, what if one side is trying to avoid answering? Um, they're actually lying. Um, again, you can have the AI be the one who's trying to avoid answering. Um, we actually did an internal prototype a few weeks ago where that was incredibly powerful. All of a sudden, I wanted to get this character to talk and instead of us having to do fallbacks, they're trying to avoid it and trying to just get out of the conversation. Um, or you can reverse it with the player being put into that role. Uh, next is voices controller. Uh, you can, there have been several games about these, some uh, real-time strategy games, for example, of hey, do this, do that. Um, uh, that is an area, I think voice is simultaneous controller with a physical controller is a more fruitful path. So you can I imagine, for example, a flight simulator where you're using a joystick, but at the same time you're talking to your wingman. Um, what if you're also uh, talking to someone you love on the other end of the radio? Um, that kind of multi-layered interaction is uh, incredibly powerful. My goodness, 20 minutes goes fast. Um, uh, secondly, group conversation, uh, and this is really, really powerful, is the idea of a group of artificial intelligences and you are a member of, of that conversation. And that way the, the user, um, be it a student or uh, someone who's looking to be entertained, can sit back, watch the dynamic flow of that conversation and decide when or where not, when not to, they want to come into the conversation. Um, there's actually a power dynamic there. If you, um, if you deconstruct conversation, the person who decides when to change the subject or the person who nominates the next speaker is actually in a position of power. Um, and it's, it's quite interesting to break that down with AIs. Um, the, so that's the problem of turn taking. I'll skip all that stuff because I've overrun. Um, and so if you buy into all of those tools are available and that you can now use them and they're good enough for purpose for education and art, um, we suspect that um, through these tools, um, the, they're different than the ones that have gone before. And because we're as artists, we're just beginning to use language in the interactive arts, language is a vehicle in which the range of human emotions can be expressed. Um, it's that ex abstraction and expression of emotion. And as we begin to explore that as artists, it now means we've got a palette that um, we can use to explore and express the full range of human emotion. Um, that's what we're going to try, and um, we're terrifically excited. It's incredibly cutting edge stuff and very challenging. Hopefully, some of the data I've given you will be of use. If not, you can certainly email me and I'll give you cards. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Rod, when you guys um, create these conversations with kids, are you in essence creating a conversation tree? Uh, I mean, yeah. can you kind of explain what it is that you, how you set it up? Yes. So we have a, um, it's a, it's a tool called Pull String, and. Um, Although there are uh, branches that you can go down in terms of the conversation, we also have a series of trigger words that will then uh, spark a thought in the non-player character. And the non-player character will then express that thought to you, look for a response depending on their personality. Um, so it's a little bit branching um, and quite a lot of um, uh, agent-based AI as well. Um, so it's kind of a combination. and the. We're, we're looking for that space between traditional branch storytelling and freeform AI, such as you might see in The Sims, and we're trying to find a place in the center where we can put the weight of um, an emotional story um, to carry it. Um, and it's, it's step by step, but um, yeah, it's quite, quite rewarding. Yes, sir. Uh, yes hi there. Hello. Um, fascinated by your technology, and I've always wondered, do you have any kind of built-in alerts if a child is using your product that says the child says somebody's hurting me help or there, the like yeah there are a uh, so there are a bunch of um, uh, flag words with uh, customer service that we have yeah um, and uh, happily you know none of those have been uh, activated because it's it's on the app store and there's a whole bunch of failbacks but yes um, and also we have to uh, really and sometimes it um, impacts the art as well 
but there are several uh, words where we just can't use them because in certain other contexts they could be obscene or whatever. Um, so, you know, certain words for cat, for example, yeah, did, uh, that sort of thing. But yes, it's, it's a tricky area. Yeah. I have a question. Yes, sir. Linguistic development of children, how are you managing from different ages? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a struggle. I mean, as you know, as anybody in the room knows who uh, makes apps for uh, children, the, the gulf between certain age groups of just separated by a couple of years is huge. And so we are, uh, we're tailoring our content depending on um, the different age groups. So our previous apps may have been, you know, the uh, six to eight range. Hello Barbie, for example, which is, uh, it's a partnership we have with uh, Mattel, and that's a real physical doll that is Wi-Fi connected that you can speak to Barbie. That obviously is for girls who are a little bit older. Um, so it's all it's all content based. And uh, also, then of course, you know you've a uh, reasonably strong British accent. Um, yes. I'm very familiar being Irish with Father Ted. Yes. <laughs> um, different uh, different regional variations. Um, are you targeting the US? Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. So actually, we we. Um, uh, the majority we do we did a majority of testing um, in the south of England as well, so we know we've got that accent covered. Uh, but yes, we have to work on that as well. Oddly enough, one of the hardest voices, adult voices, to get who speak in English is um, high-pitched uh, ladies. Happily, we have several uh, at the office, but very very high-pitched. Like it's. Like, well, what was that voice again? So we have to work hard on that, and we have to do various fallbacks and different phenemes for it. Um, so yes, you have to do a lot of work. Yeah. Fascinating. Any more questions? We're good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much.